All right, part D of uh, introduction to cloud computing and big data slash data engineering. And this is the last of the three uh, little sections on defining a cloud. So let's get going. So in this section, we look at some sort of um, really high level stuff. How much money in clouds, who has market share, and how are they important to, are they to the people who use them? Okay, here we get the very latest results on the, uh, well, as of August 2020 on uh, the total cloud market. And um, it has the uh, all these top people, which are Google, uh, Microsoft, Amazon are the top three in increasing order. Then we are followed by Alibaba, and then we have Tencent, IBM, Oracle, and yet others. And these numbers you'll get reported differently in different places, but they're roughly of this in this um, category. And probably you're gonna depends whether you count Microsoft's um, hosted things like 365 and Google's. I don't think you ever count Google's hosted search and things like that, but. Um, What's amazing here is this number here, $35 billion was spent on clouds in one quarter. So what is that? That's uh, $140 billion a year. And uh, that thing is increasing 10% from the previous quarter. So just in one quarter, it's gone up 10%. And it's um, actually, uh, it's possibly pandemic related because pandemic is, is actually enhancing um, Cloud related things because it's putting more and more emphasis on IT and cloud based programming because that's much better for collaboration than, say, desktop work and things like that. And um, although the overall, as we'll see later, although the, you know, somehow this can't can go on forever and ever, but it's also true that people are not only increasing their use of clouds, they're decreasing their use of their own infrastructure. Their private uh, systems are going down in use because they just, uh, the advantage of the public clouds are they're much easier to scale than the private ones. And also they're run probably more professionally and more efficiently than any any single company can run their system. All right, so here is uh, some remarks about the three leaders. Here is Amazon, which is um, obviously trying its hardest to uh, um, Keep its leadership, but then you know the leader always finds it. Sometimes the leader shoots up, but other times, like here, the leader is hanging in there as a leader, but still going down as as uh, its lead is going down, but for at least percentage-wise. And um, this uh, Amazon AWS had a six percent increase in revenue, just again in one quarter, and. Um, that's a gain due to the going from on-premise, the private solution, to the public solution. And uh, so the sort of three top things, on-premise, public cloud number one, or public cloud number two, three, four, five, six. And uh, these, this thing here says that multi-cloud is important. Uh, we certainly use multiple clouds uh, with probably Amazon and Google are the ones we use most. But these are not, we don't use a lot of public clouds. Here we have Azure, which is actually had the largest increase. It went from 17% of the market to 20%. And quite why that is, is not quite really clear to me, because I think Amazon has more, a wider range of services than Azure. Um, both have huge numbers. I, I can't believe that's a dramatic effect. They have this business intelligence service, which I'm sure is very good, but uh, Google and Amazon also have comparable services. So, but Microsoft also has areas like small businesses where it's traditionally very strong. <coughs> there may be areas of Microsoft's strength are actually going up more because they weren't the first people to start using clouds. Um, so, and of course, all of these companies are increasing the number of availability zones, the number of places they have computers. That's also uh, has to be done to obey these rules, like in Europe, 
European data can't leave Europe and things like that. Google, it's surprising actually that Google Cloud did not go up because they're trying very hard. And Google does have the best AI in the world. But somehow I've always been surprised that Google is so talented. But that talent doesn't actually, I mean, it actually has a, it's, it's share price and it's, and things like this, it's cloud share are not, do not reflect that. Uh, they, it is not increasing as fast as Amazon or Microsoft in those areas. And of course, here we have the Elon Musk saying deep mind is his top concern. That's because Google and deep mind has so many great AI people. Um, here we have um, sort of detailed background in, the, in Q4 2019, where we have Google going up here from in one year. Amazon not going up as fast, but still, what's it, four to, over four and a half times bigger than Google. And here we have, uh, actually Google just, it seems just released its Q4 2019 was the first time it really had its first revenue growth number, which was 53%. And that lay in between Microsoft at 60. I told you, Microsoft is actually doing better from, is doing the best of all these companies, 62%. And borrowed Amazon's only a 34% increase uh, year over year. 34, that's a terrible, so we feel real sad for them. All right. And uh, here is uh, the, the concentration actually done a bit clearer. Uh, this uh, part on here has IBM on it as well. This one has actually uh, IBM, uh, Salesforce, Tencent, and Oracle. So uh, here are the others, IBM, Ten Salesforce, Tencent, and Oracle. I missed out Salesforce when I quoted the members of others in the past. We still have the four top players, Alibaba, which is Google, Azure, and Amazon. And uh, here we have um, 111 billion, well, we made it 140. Uh, but that probably is growing so rapidly, it depends, it depends which year you measure what number you get there. It's certainly an amazing number, amazing, I still remember it just seems yesterday that we were discussing whether clouds would make it, and it was hovering at around five to ten percent of the market, and people were discussing with great vigor whether it would make it to fifteen percent. Well, now we know it's sort of in some measure uh, over ninety percent of the actual computing is done on clouds by by industry. So, pretty amazing, staggering. And here's the last of these modern uh, plots. Uh, after this, we go back to some older plots I collected. And here we have a focus on China, where we have again Alibaba, which was our top one in the world thing, Tencent. And in China, Amazon as a player, as is Baidu. But um, Alibaba and Tencent are the dominant players. And um, we have here who's a Huawei, which is of course, uh, Slightly controversial company these days, whether that's fair or not, I don't know. We have the Baidu AI cloud. And um, over here, we have a couple of effectively US com comparisons. We have which of these major US vendors, what do they have, what is their fraction of the IoT market? Uh, here is the share of the IoT market 34, 23, 20, which shows that Google is much closer to Microsoft in that area than, um, than in the general area, where it's 17 to 10. If you look at all these numbers around here, they differ by little amounts. I think it's mainly due, it's probably either due to the source, because these are pretty flake, difficult things to extract, and the time period in which you're looking at. Whether it's the quarter, the year, uh, you'll get different answers. But anyway, if you look at this, you'll see uh, actually these three major vendors are a larger total fraction. So the others must be less important in the IoT cloud market. Because uh, the sum of the, all three of these major vendors is larger in the IoT market than in the general cloud market. Now we have NVIDIA, which is the most striking success story. And of course, that's all due to the importance of its GPUs for, um, uh, for deep learning. And um, 
and it's selling a huge number. It you know used to sell them for bitcoins and and um, graphics. Now they're being sold directly to do uh, deep learning. And you can see here that um, for the first time in the Q2 uh, FY20, so this is the report that. Um, well, this is August 2020, so. This must be the report ending in July. And you can see for the first time, the data center revenues are bigger than the gaming revenues. And um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, here we have, look, just uh, a couple of years ago, um, with um, gaming over twice data center. So data center, gaming is actually, uh, actually, I think gaming's gone down. From this large value here, because gaming probably had Bitcoin enhancements around here. So, and of course, uh, Nvidia has also brought purchased Mellanox, which is the maker of InfiniBAM, which is the dominant high-speed interconnect, and we need high-speed interconnect to get these parallel deep learnings to run well. So this is all quite interesting, and these numbers again are staggeringly large. Remember that 140 billion. Cloud annual market, public cloud annual market. Thank you. Now we go on to a discussion of the uh, previous data from a, a couple of years before this. 2017, um, the competitive positioning of um, different um, vendors. We have here Amazon, followed by Microsoft, Google, Alibaba. And we plot here growth rate up here, where of course Google and Microsoft and Alibaba are up higher. IBM's actually even a little lower, but it's still a solid player. Oracle is a tiny bit higher than Amazon. But um, here's another view of this, which is the market share. Um, showing uh, Amazon again, pretty dominant. And as this is, um, Q3 2018, a year later, we see Amazon over the uh, last year has gone up 1% in share. It's gone up a lot more in volume. Microsoft has gone up the most. Google is also 1%. Alibaba, 1%. And in fact, Microsoft is by far the best performing of the major vendors. Here's another plot which is. Um, an estimate of the how the major vendors will be divided. If we have Amazon, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform, and we see the expectation is that Google will grow, factor of four from 2015 to 2020. Uh, Microsoft a factor of two in share, but Amazon will decrease. But again, it's a little. You have to be a little careful because actually Amazon is increasing dramatically in volume. It's just such a big player and started first. It stands little chance of not um, going down in percentage. And even how so in 2020, it is twice the size of uh, the nearest competitor, which is Microsoft. And it's worth it's over half the total. So it's a major player. And finally, in this set of slides, we have the um, Revenue not divided by vendor, but divided by type. Here we have software as a service, infrastructure as a service, and platform as a service. And we've described what those are, software as applications, infrastructure, the actual hardware, the machines, the virtual, machi virtual images, um, and P is the middle one. Here is another plot with um, the Amazon revenues as a function of time through a year ago. I'm talking at the end of 18, so this is Q317. And we see the income's gone up to uh, um, 4.5 billion a year, a quarter, 4.5 billion a quarter. Uh, but this is uh, just, a, it's just, this is still going up fast because here we have uh, up through um, 2018, and we have uh, we Amazon topping 
um, six billion for the quarter. And here the operating profit is pretty solid, so they can actually decrease their prices. This is a pretty healthy profit. And in fact, we know that in some years, Amazon Web Services actually are either the only thing making a profit in Amazon or a significant fraction of that profit. Here is another view of this, which is the Amazon sales, quarterly sales, and so over here. This is the the latest, <coughs> latest number, $6.68 billion. Pretty impressive number, and it's just remarkable how solidly and reliably it's increasing. It shows that uh, the demand for cloud computing is still really solid. As we said, this is a related slide showing a related effect. Here are the from Wikibon, which is another online website telling you useful things. And um, this one tells you how the uh, various forms of enterprise computing change with time. Uh, here we are, we are sort of here, 2018. And here we have that um, maybe clouds are a third of the total at this stage here. And they're going to be 50% of the total um, somewhere, um, um, they want to certainly 50%, uh, they're probably 50% here, 2026. And this is divided in various categories here, some staff in the middle here, this purple thing. Um, and notice that these ones here are going down. I operational IT staff in enterprise is declining 7% per year. So the job of working in enterprise is not a winning idea. However, if you want to go and work in a cloud vendor, that's growing 19% per year. So jobs are switching from the enterprise data centers to the cloud data centers. And the size of the enterprise operation is uh, declining 3% per year, the traditional operation. And as I said, the clouds are going up 19%. So this is pretty interesting. And you can study this in detail and um, show the different components, how accurate they are. I don't know when some of these um, separations are not so cl clearly interesting to me. But um, uh, I think the message is clear. People are moving to the cloud. I think this difference is very interesting. 19% public clouds, minus 3% traditional enterprise. Remember that one. All right, so if you were a CIO and somebody surveyed you, and you said, what's important to me? What am I worried about? Well, uh, there are many things to worry about, but in this survey, 74% clouds were on their mind. And the next thing on their mind was the Internet of Things. How do I cope with all these things around my organization? Monitoring my equipment and my cars and my aircraft and actually even my people, because they're full of wearables, which are broadcasting everything to the world. And then six, here we, AI is going, they should be more worried about AI, because AI is going to have real importance to their organization. 3D printing, that's uh, maybe now it's almost getting established. Virtual reality or augmented reality. And then back here is blockchain. That's pretty yummy technology. That's all about, uh, about cryptocurrency and uh, trusted distributed ledgers. Pretty important for, in this world. Hi, here we have a different type of plot. Um, this is the plot through 2021 of the IT infrastructure. Um, um, divided into traditional data centers, public clouds, and private clouds. And you can see that the cloud fraction reaches 50% um, in 2021. Um, Another, just an update of this graph to 2022 shows almost the same 
a little change between 21 and 22. And notice, of course, the, the amount of money spent in the purple part, of Magenta maybe, is uh, 67 billion in 2015, and I have 63 billion in 2020. So it's increasing and in, hugely increasing in total value, but also increasing in um, fraction. And then we have a later plot, which points out that um, although data centers are 50% of the deployment footprint in 20, around 2020, they're actually a much smaller fraction of the workload because um, clouds are much more efficient. You can deploy many, many more uh, images on a single machine in a cloud than you can on a, on a uh, traditional data center. So clouds are more like over 90% of the actual work done. Um, so this is a pretty remarkable. Um, trend. Here we come back to Amazon and dollars. And um, this is something which I already mentioned. This is the, the total um, Amazon um, revenue in orange. And the uh, Amazon Web Services um, uh, revenue in black. And we see in Q117, Actually, Amazon Web Services were 90 percent of the of the actual income dollars in the pocket, whereas they're only 10 percent of the revenue, the dollars spent, showing that they didn't make a lot of profit on their um, business. I mean, that basic business of selling things. This is a plot we've seen already. This is the quarterly um, revenue. Showing peaks at Christmas, of course, that's the uh, Black Fridays, and uh, I don't know what color green Christmas is, and things like that, and Santa Claus is. Drive it up at the, uh, every year, that quarter's the largest quarter by a very significant amount. But the other quarters, of course, are pretty, um, pretty solid as well. Um, and the final set of this is the update to 2018. Showing in 20, uh, Q2 2018, um, it, the income was only 50% of the total, but and actually 12%, slightly higher fraction of the total of revenue. But still, income, the profit on Amazon Web Services is much higher than on the rest of Amazon. Which tells you something. But probably the most simple, it tells you Amazon could reduce their prices if they were pushed by competition at the moment. And presumably Google and Microsoft match or, or, or slightly act as a barrier on the price that Amazon can charge. But still, they're all making lots of money. It's a good business to be in, uh, which is sort of quite surprising to me. It's such, it's such a good business. So that's, uh, that's the dollar picture. Thank you. Money. Here's another look at this. Um, Increase from 67 to 162, showing how it goes up per year. This again with this 19% number.